God is bigger than the biggest forever and ever in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we please sit down? Our Bible reading will be taken from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 16 and 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 16 and 17. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we, though many, are one bread and one body, for we all, for we will all partake of that one bread. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in our hearts in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Amen and amen. We are glad to be part of another communion service in this month of April. Just lift your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I appreciate you. I'm grateful to be alive and to be a partaker of the blessing. Lord, take the glory. Wave your hands to him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wave it very well like you mean it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Lord, we owe it all to you. Everything that we have, everything that we have, Lord, we owe it to you. And this night, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for the breath that we breathe in. Thank you for your hand that sustains us. Thank you for your grace that keeps us. Thank you for your mercy that you make available. Thank you that we are here. Thanking you again. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. And Lord, we want to thank you because we know that our gathering is not to ourselves that Jesus is the head of the body. And even as we gather tonight, let virtue flow. In the name of Jesus, let burdens be rolled away. In the name of Jesus. And pray for us, Lord. Let uh, our God do a new thing in our lives. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Take your seats. God bless you. Thank you, choir. Um, always a thing to look forward to, to come to the house of the Lord for communion because of the peculiar blessing that this has for us. And because of the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, which came out of his mouth. If you read 1 Corinthians 11 from verse 23, you see that that word in some of the Bibles, they are reading, written in red, right? Where the Lord said, do this in remembrance of me. So it's a very simple um, command. Praise God. And uh, when we want to know the gravity of a thing, we always go back to uh, the first occurrence. Like we started to study the Bible now to talk about the unchangeability of God. So we go back to Genesis uh, to discover that God has been. Because when in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, when it says, in the beginning God meaning that in the timeless past, God. So at that time, all these names that they are mentioning now didn't exist, only God. Are you here? Uh, so if somebody say, okay, we have our own God in our village or in our country or in our part of the world, they are talking about temporal, they are talking about idols. 
Because in the very beginning, only God was there. Praise God. Even angels were created. So only God has been in the timeless and ageless past. Praise ye the Lord. So, and along the, uh, in the course of time, God began to create. And so he created this earth and he uh, created the lights, the greater, the smaller, uh, to rule. And he used the word to rule times and seasons because they also have their significance in terms of ruling. Ruling means that they have control. Amen. Praise God. And after he created all that, he did all the separation. He said water, be separated, light, be separated, and so on. And then he created man as uh, a special creature in a sense that man should take charge of everything that God has created. For instance, in uh, the book of Genesis chapter 2, we understand also that God made a garden. He planted a garden where he placed man there. So it was God who planted the garden. In fact, the Bible tells us that at that time, the Lord had not caused it to start to rain. Not because any power stopped him, but because it wasn't in his own plan, the time to cause rain to start to fall. So when God created man, he created man to be like him. And so the sinful nature of man was not there at the beginning. What was ruling in the life of man was the power of the blessing. Amen. Because when he created man, Bible says, uh, male and female, he created them. Verse 28, what did God do? And he blessed them. Hallelujah. So what, is, what has been playing in the life, uh, in the lives of men is the power of the blessing. There was no cause. Are we together? Please take your seats. Thank you. Ushers be alert. Thank you. So, um, what was reigning in the lives of men was the power of the blessing. And because there was no cost at that time, it's also even difficult for us now to fully understand the kind of joy or pleasure that Adam had in the beginning. For instance, the garden that God created for him, Eden is a garden of pleasure, total bliss and pleasure. And so man was under the influence of blessing. Amen. Amen. I like the passage you read, though. the cup which we take, the cup of the communion. Is it not the cup of what? Is it not the cup of what? Uh -huh. So there's blessing in the cup. Praise God. So when we take the cup tonight, just know that you are taking in what? I like to read the Bible almost literally. Without, sometimes you don't need to explain, explain too, many, too many things. The cup of blessing, which we do what? Which we... Uh, so the cup has a name. What's the name of the cup? The cup of blessing. <laughs> Why? Because our Lord Jesus Christ took our causes upon himself on the cross and launched us into... The power of the blessing afresh. Amen. Amen. So that Genesis 1, 26 to 28 contains a lot that we can live by. And I'm trusting God. I don't know about other churches. This is where we are. And I'll tell you why in a moment. You know, so in this house, things must happen. In this house, the light of God must enter into the hearts of men to the extent that we will walk in the power of the blessing. I told you those who are here on Tuesday, that building of Burj Khalifa, 163, 164 floors, they were not invented by, they, 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 those people, it's not that because they had got anointing or because they have baptism of the Holy Spirit, because they are men. 
Some of the richest men in the world today, they don't even believe in God. But they are still under the power of the blessing. Why? Because it was God. It's God. Whether they know it or not, God is the one who placed the blessing upon man. Let me not go there. Okay, so, but in this house, especially tonight as we take this cup, blessing will come. Causes will be rolled away. Uh, because you cannot have two authorities in the same domain. When the power of the blessing comes, especially when it's coming from heaven, the power of the cause is destroyed. It's, uh, it's because it is not just in words, it is in power. Praise God. So when God made man, we were going on a journey, let me go back there. The Lord started to uh, give him responsibilities and he also started to teach him his ways and also started to give him principles uh, to live by so that when man fell which was not an accident to heaven it looked, God, God sees everything ahead of time the Lord had actually given him the key for him to be redeemed and that redemption will come through the blood. Are we here? Yeah. So there were several things that happened. God taught them principles. Uh, when, uh, and the, one of the powerful principles, if you don't take anything away from this communion service, take this one, is the principle of participation. The principle of participation. Now, when God wants to do a thing, he brings in the participation of men. Amen. Yeah. So, God has not made man to be like a tree or like a stone that is just there. The Lord will always require man to participate. Participate. The principle of participation so that we will learn as believers to also participate in our miracles. David said something in Psalm 23. He said, Lord, you have set, you have prepared a table before me. Will God force you to eat? Hello? Who prepared the table? Who uh -huh. oh, will eat it? Uh, so man has to go. And so yeah, I, t I tell you now, because it's... <laughs> uh, so when we come like this also, and God has set a table before us, you, you can't even drag some men. Even if you drag them, they will say, I'm not going. But it's a table that is set. So sometimes we as believers also, please sit at the back if you're just coming. We as believers also don't realize that there is a participation that is required of us. When God was, was going to deliver the first world, then he asked uh, Noah to do what? To build an ark. So if Noah would say, ah, Lord, you know how to separate the wicked from the kingdom, I don't need to do that, you know, he will be destroyed. Why? Because he didn't take part as the Lord wanted him to do. When the Lord was going to choose Abraham, he also asked him to participate. How? He said, leave your father and mother and kindred and go to a land that you don't know. But he said that when you take that step, eh, I will show you, I'll start to reveal the land to you. Please don't walk around. Try to sit in one place. So that uh, there was a participation that was required. I think in Genesis chapter 12, verse 4. After Abraham had that, well, what did he do? The Bible says, and Abraham departed. So Abraham did what? Departed. So he participated. I've shared this with you before, and we don't have to go back there. It actually looks like Abraham did not initially move very, quick, move very quickly, but ultimately did what? He moved. And when he took that step, heavens opened. Why? Because he participated in that miracle that God 
wants or wanted to do in his life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, so I can cite several examples for you of how men had to uh, participate in their miracles. In fact, in Gen Matthew chapter 7, verse, from verse 7, you see the summary of it. When the Bible says, you should do what? Ask, and it shall be given you. Who is going to do the asking? The man. So if the man says, I don't want to ask, but I want to have, it will be wasting time. Why? It's breaking the law of participation. Hallelujah. Are we still together? Uh -huh. So, and it says, seek. And you shall find those are timeless principles. So when it comes to the dealing of God with men, after the sixth day, when he rested on the seventh, he began to teach the man how to be like a God on the earth because man was created to be like a God, to have dominion over all the other creatures that God has made. And he would have to learn the ways of God and he would have to learn principles. Amen. So there is always a participation that is required of you. There are things that heaven has to do on the heart today that even the church might be resisting God. The own, his own church, his own body can be resisting him for not following the path of participation. If the Lord, for instance, say, come ye from out from among them and be separate. And say, no, I don't want to become, come out, you know. We will hinder ourselves from getting the fullness of what God has for us. So, if there's something to take home tonight, take home that very crucial uh, truth. That man would always have to, God will always require man to participate in his own miracle. Glory to God. Now that takes us to the first Passover, where the principles were laid down for Passover. If, when, when, if you read Genesis chapter 12, read all that chapter you are going to see that all the questions that you want to ask about the communion or the Passover, the Lord gave the answer there. How should it be taken? Exodus 12, 11, he said, guard up your loins. Eh? Do it in haste. So the Lord gave them the how. Am I right? He said, and thus shall you eat it. This is how to eat it. Your loins guarded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. Why? Because it is the Lord's Passover. Let all your attention be held. Okay, so, and I believe that this is saying something. You see, when God wants to do something new in our lives, we have to be ready. So we have to be prepared. And that's our core passage for this month. Isaiah 43, 18, 19, the Lord told, he's saying to us, you have to forget the former things, Abby. Don't dwell on the things of old. Why, he said, be ready because the Lord will do a new thing. So you have to be ready. You have to set your heart. Because if you allow the past to hold you, you may not prepare yourself. So God told them, guard up yourself and be ready to move. When it should be taken, it's also there. Uh, the Lord told them to prepare it in the evening. What verse is that? Uh, if you see, put it on the screen. In that same chapter 12. So among the Jews, they have two periods they call the evening. One is 3 p.m. The other one is 6 p.m. So they were going to do the preparation between, between the hour of 3 and 6. So actually, if you study even when Christ Jesus was crucified, it was at 3 p.m. that he gave up the coast. The time was mentioned because it's important. Daddy will tell us, Daddy Jew will tell us that don't take communion in the uh, morning, even because the timing is set. I mean, they have, we have asked him, why? 
He said, go and check all scriptures. There, there's no instance where it was taken uh, in the morning. But let's, let's not go into there because some will question us for doing that. In fact, it's actually called the Lord's Supper. Why? Because the tradition is that they take it. Uh, so they will prepare between 3 and 6 and take it after that 6 o'clock, which is in their own night. That was what was established in the first. So the how is said, the when is said, who should take it? Exodus chapter 13, 43 to 48, he said, no stranger should take, uh, those who should take should be circumcised, right? Uh, and so on, he tells you um, who should take. Amen. Uh, when should they eat? We're talking about that at night. Uh, and then when, in terms of the period, how frequent? He also says, say for every first month, uh, you will take it. Praise God. Why should it be taken? He said, because the Lord wants to pass through the land. Amen? And so even the why is, is stated there. What is the purpose of the Passover? It wasn't just uh, a feast. It wasn't just a party. That feast was going to mark the deliverance of a people out of the hold or the stronghold of Egypt. So all of those questions uh, were answered. But I want to show you something this time because we're talking about what participation, right? And the Lord spake unto the, that's chapter 12, and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, this month shall be unto you the beginning of month, it shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers. And the Lord specified there, a lamb for a house. Praise God. And see, so just if, if take, imagine that this is one house now, right? The Lord said to them, take one lamb for the entire uh, house. Amen. So that the people will learn from that moment on what is called the principle of participation or the principle of sharing, you know, so that the people will know that this is, that there's power in fellowship. The whole thing about communion, communion itself means fellowship. The whole essence of uh, um, communion is that we come together and recognize that there is a head and that virtue flows from the head and we don't have to sweat. We don't have to sweat if we do what the Lord has us to do. The Lord will do the rest. All those firstborn of Egypt that were slain, even the children of Israel did not know when it happened. They didn't see how the angel did the work. Their own was just to do what? Do what the Lord asked them to do in this verse. A lamb for a house. You see, when you have slaughtered it between the hour of that three and six, put the lintels on your door, and then uh, take the meat and, you know, bake it, in an, or, you know, like with fire. And just eat. Uh, but it was symbolic of things to come. There will just be one lamb for the house. And the people must understand the power of communion, that life flows when uh, the people come into uh, communion. It's so important. Uh, please let me put that uh, 1 Corinthians 16, 10, 16 again on the screen. If you have it in NIV, put it there, NIV, or New American Standard Version. It's so important because, yeah, let's take that NIV. It's not the cup of thanks given for which we give thanks. That's the communion table now, wine. Uh, for which we give thanks, a participation in the blood of Christ. 
So what we do when we say eat or drink in remembrance of this, we come into participation in the blood of Christ. And it's not the bread that we break, a participation in the what? In the body of Christ. So what King James called uh, communion, this passage or this version breaks it down further to say it is a participation. Praise God. If you have New American Standard or Amplified, put it, let's see what it says. Okay. We'll soon take the communion and um, do we have it? Okay, that's Amplified. The cup of blessing of wine of the, at the lost uh, supper upon which we ask God's blessing, does it not mean that in drinking it, we do what? In, we, we participate in and share our fellowship, which is a communion in the blood of Christ the Messiah. The bread which we break, does it not mean that in eating it, we do what? We participate and share fellowship in the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. A lot of the things that God will um, um, do for the body has been embedded in the body. And the power to which, uh, through which they are released unto us, listen, the power through which they are released unto us is true participation. Your body as you are now, your body is in total participation. That's why you are not groaning or screaming. If there's anyone who that has one part of his body, even the tiniest finger, that refuses to participate in the body, the whole body will do what? Will be groaning. Amen. Uh, so a lot of the groaning that we groan is because we ourselves have not recognized the power of the body and we have not applied the, power, the principle of participation and so groaning happens to the tiniest form of uh, fellowship. There are families who, uh, who also neglect this aspect. And in church, we, don't, we are not, maybe possibly, possibly, perhaps, we're not teaching a lot about it now. When God created Eve, did he make him to be like Adam? Uh, I would say male and female, male and uh, male and there's so much confusion about that now. Yeah, it's simple, male and uh, so when when even in the context of a family, the male starts to behave like female and the female starts to behave like male. Eh? And that sharing and the participation is neglected, that union will grow. Am I right? Uh, even the whole thing about men and women is also different. The voice, the likes, the colors they like, the, you know, you can't just comprehend it. Abby? If you go to my wardrobe now, you're going to see blue, black, white. Gray. Abby? Uh, but the wardrobe of a... Of <laughs> you too, you're laughing. Why do women wear red? <laughs> because I can see many of our sisters here this night are wearing red. If a man wears red inside this house, he would think he needs deliverance. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And so even when we are preparing our young ones to get married, we are not teaching them that there is a differentiation. And so when they get married, they don't understand that this is about participation, fellowship, communion, coming together. That it is the participation that releases the blessing. But it is the participation that plugs you into the blessing. And so the Lord told them, look, the lamp 
may have many parts, right? But it's one lamb for one house, and the people must learn to participate. One will go for the leg, another one for the finger, another one for, you know, but then it is still one lamb and one house uh, principle. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I was uh, sharing with the pastor in the night yesterday. You know, when we talk, we spoke at length. And then when you look, you look at this world that we are in, you know the world is bleeding. A lot of people don't know Jesus. And a lot of people are, the world is getting darker. And the body that God has set to bring redemption to the world is the church. The instrument that God will use to change the world is the church. Jesus said, I uh, go therefore in my name, I be. I say all authority in heaven and on earth is where? It's now with me. Who is that? The head, I be. And the head says, go in my name. So wherever there is an alignment, the authority that's upon my head will flow into the body and things will happen. As simple as that. Uh-huh. But when the body begins to say, I can operate without the head, we will have problems. Amen. And especially when the body does not operate in the principle of participation, we have problems. So you can have a family unit of two people and they are fighting. And if they decide to change the pattern and say, let's participate, what you bring in may be different from what I bring in, but let's participate, what will happen? There will be a turnaround. Amen. Uh-huh. And even if you are not married, listen though, carefully. If you are not married, your, there has to be a paradigm shift inside you. There has to be a, some of our older women, this is your duty to tell the younger men, the women, to teach them. Yes, it's your duty actually, to teach them. That there are things you, there are garbages we have carried from the world. Eh? That we not work in the context of a home. Am I? Are we sharing? Are we sharing? And some of the older women know that. They understand the sacrifices that they have made for the home to stand. They, are, they understand how they had to complement for the home to stand. And then you now have a generation of younger ones who don't understand the meaning of sacrifice. Everybody wants to remain in his own lane. Let me mind my lane. You mind your lane. Uh, and now in the, this world of digits, you can actually, ah, but you see younger people, you know they can stay in the house for three days without talking to anyone. Everything is on their phone. And they are laughing, they are playing games, they are everything. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, and they, do, they sometimes even don't feel like anything is missing. Because there's a world that is shaping men to try to live by themselves and for themselves. And when you live by yourself and for yourself, you have totally thrown out a very crucial cardinal principle of God, which is the principle of what? Participation. So the Lord was saying to them that day that all of you gather inside the house, seal yourself there, put the lintel on the door. You have to be there inside the house and participate. Do you know that uh, in the Orthodox Church of those olden times, when a man or a woman comes to the priest and says, we have done everything possible, our marriage or union is irreconcilable, they will say, tell them there is only one thing left to do. So they have a castle and they will open the door of the castle because the castle is always shut. They open the door of the castle and say, husband, go in, wife, go in, 
And then they locked them inside there for a period, whether two months or three months. Everything they need to eat so is all inside the place. And they discovered that 100% of the time, when they come out, they are, come, they are very happy to live for the rest of their lives together. Amen. And so when you go inside the house, some of those extras that are not making you us to progress, eh? they will be shared out by what is called the principle of participation. A lamp for a house. Because God wants us to partake and have fellowship in the uh, body and in the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, you know, ultimately what, unites, what defines us as Christians is the blood of Jesus. Not your tribe. Abby? Not your background. If you are the child of the richest in the world, and you, you, and you child, the child of the poorest in the world, you come together, you are not going to be talking about how much we have in the bank. If truly you are Christians, the only denominator is what? The blood of Jesus that has cleansed us. So there is only one body. And there is only one father. There is only one faith. Let me read that passage to you. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4. So, don't worry, we'll soon take the communion. Ephesians 4. Please sit where you are, don't walk around. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vacation where you are called with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, for bearing one another. In love. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit. In the bond of peace. There is one body. One spirit. So. If. You cannot align with the body. You are already yielding to another spirit. Because there is only one spirit. Praise God. Amen. Say even as you are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is above all and through all, and in you all. Uh, this is enough for us. Praise God. Only one Father, only one Lord, only one baptism, only one Spirit. So if you have two believers living under the same canopy, or if you have, let's say, a unit or a department in church, and one person say, this is my own way, and another person say, this is one way, at least one person is wrong. And it means another, one person, at least out of the two, is under a strange influence. Are we together? I know. Because if we recognize the airship and the lordship of Jesus, what will happen? They say we'll be together. But we have done it in such a way that you don't even have two directions, or you can have four directions, among four people. So you can't be talking about, that's why the scripture says, endeavor, try very hard to keep that bond. Why? The blessing is released in the midst of participation. The miracle is in the participation. Every time that God will do something new on the earth, it will require men to participate in that miracle. Don't forget. John chapter 5. Jesus said to the man who has been in, under infirmity for 38 years, do you want to be made whole? Was an answer required? Yes. And in making him whole, what did the Lord Jesus do? 
rise up, take up your bed, and walk. That's, is that what he said? Did they kick him? Did they push him down that the anointing? He just said, you have to participate in it. Rise up. So if the man said, well, Lord, you know, you, you, I'm sure you know that I've been here a long time. If I can rise, would I not help myself all these years? I would have risen and jumped inside the water. Amen. Luke chapter 5. After the Lord Jesus used the boat of uh, Peter, uh, and he came back, and they had had frustration after they toiled all night trying to catch fish, and they didn't catch anything. After Jesus used the boat, and there were two boats there, he chose the boat of Peter. And then he said to him, launch out into the deep. Peter said, I'm, I'm a fisherman. I understand fishing. We came at the right time in the night. We had the right tool. We had a boat and a fishing net. We had partners that we worked together, Abby, the right collaboration. What else? Is everything about fishing we have done. But he says something. Nevertheless, at your, what will I do? I will let down the net. Luke chapter 5, verse 5. What was Peter doing there? He was participating in his own miracle. And after he did that, he laid out the net. The catch became so great that they could not, uh, they could not alone uh, handle. So when the Lord says to you and to me, I will do a new thing, just remember that your participation may be required. Hallelujah. And none of us will be left behind. God has not abdicated his throne. God can do anything at any time. God can choose anyone at any time. Amen. There were 12 disciples that followed Jesus all the, the time. The one who wrote most of the 12, uh, the New Testament, was not one of them. In fact, after Jesus left, he was working against them. But then the Lord called him and poured grace upon him. So God can do anything at any time. God can use anyone that he wants to use. You see, we are so much boxed in all kinds of uh, religion these days that we have left the scriptures behind. And we have to go back there so that we understand how God does his things. From the time he made man, he gave man principles to walk in. That even when he wants to do a miracle in your life, it will demand your participation. The cup that we bless, is it not the cup of participation in the blood of Jesus? The bread that we take, is it not that we are through this uh, obedience? Uh, also committing ourselves to the body. Am I boring you? First Corinthians 11, we read that passage. The Bible says when people take it unworthily, when they don't discern the body, what happens? You say for this sake, some are weak. Eh? Some even sleep. Why? Is it because they don't discern the body? They don't look at the body. They don't say you are part of me, I'm part of you. They don't do it in the spirit of participation. The whole first level, first level was read, written on the premise of one thing. When they had communion, when they had the feast, they understood they needed to have, have the feast. But some will go early because they know that it is always in the evening. So some will arrive like 2 p.m. And there was a lot. Communion in those days is not like this. I'm, I've, I've been saying to myself, one day we will have the communion. You will eat and be full. Plenty of bread. Praise God. 
And, but some people will say it's a sin because they are used to tiny pellets. <laughs> so, but in the Bible, they were not. They were they are real meal. It was a meal. Um, so, but some will have come early, and they will heat, 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 heat more than they, are, they can take, so that those who are coming later will not have anything. That's what prompted Apostle Paul to actually write this. He said, because you are doing that, you have already missed the essence of the communion. Because the essence is what? To come together and participate and share. Brethren, let us prepare ourselves. Because for God to bless us is not a difficult thing. For God to give you a, a life-changing idea that will surpass, uh, that will shake the world, it's not a difficult thing. I'm talking to you as I'm talking to myself. For God to make your home work, it's not a difficult thing. For God to make you rich, it's not a difficult thing. For God to drive poverty away totally from your lineage, it's not a difficult thing. I was stunned when preacher, one preacher said something. He said, poverty is a choice at the end of the day that we all have to make, whether to be poor. He said, people are poor by choice. Now, don't forget that. That poverty is also by choice. Because if we neglect the principles that God has set, right, we, and the principle, especially this means of participation, we may not get the flow that is meant to be flowing into our lives. Amen. Uh, you shouldn't serve God and not receive the blessing. The Bible says even the laborer is worthy of his wages. Amen. Uh, so let's not make God look like God is a bad God. He's not. And he's not dead. And he's on his throne. And he has not abdicated his throne. But we are the ones who need to prepare we are the ones who need to go back and find out what he has said. We are the ones who need to put selfishness aside because it doesn't work. We are the ones who need to put self-centeredness aside because it doesn't work. You can't be so self-centered and think that you can have a fulfilling marriage. Our older women, am I right? But are you teaching the younger ones? They are not listening. You must try harder. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, you cannot say I'm minding my own self, my own lane, my own thing. I have my own plan in life, my own agenda. My own little corner that no man can trespass. If you are not careful, God will leave you by yourself. Because if he gives you a man, you will mess him up. And vice versa. Because some men are also like that. Some men, they have their territories that their wives cannot cross. I worked in a place one time, and they used to give us car and driver. Many years ago now, 20 plus. So I had a colleague. When the man is not in the car, and the wife not there sit in the owner's car now. Oh, you, must, you, must, you should say, just sit in your area. Nobody must sit. Ah! What a bondage. So, you can laugh at it, too. but if we don't understand the principle of sharing, you are the one wounding yourself. You can fast for 100 days and still not have any results. Why? God's principles are God's principles. Amen. Yeah, because if we are not careful now, we can even turn fasting into religion. Some people think once you have fasted, the miracles you just follow like that. What if you don't participate? Rise up. Take up your bed. Does it make sense? 
If you are talking to the Lord, it makes all the sense in the world. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There are people also who dance so much and drop an empty envelope. You are forgetting that, that you have to participate. And you say, ah, it's because I don't have. But the moment you step out of church, you buy Coke, Gala, you buy for a friend, God will help me, he will help you. In the name of Jesus. So, we, uh, we don't have to sweat to receive blessings from God. This night, blessings will flow. And not because we, we screamed or we fell to the ground, but because we are learning to do or participate. Very simple instruction that the Lord gave. Take and do what? Eat. What do you call that? Participation. In the same manner, take and drink. For some of us now, that's too much to do. I want to encourage you, uh, like one of our brothers said on Sunday, he said that communion is something I always look forward to. That's very encouraging. You always look forward to it. Why? Because there are a few things that the Lord asks us that he said categorically, these do. If you fast for 100 days, that's your choice. That's your, it's you who choose to. You understand? But this one is coming from the mouth of Jesus himself. Say, so do this, and as often as you do it, you are doing it in remembrance of, of me. Let me read one or two passages, and then we we'll go to the communion proper. And the Lord will do what he will do. In the name of Jesus, Amen and amen. This night the Lord will roll burdens away. In the name of Jesus. Our Lord Jesus said, my body is light. My yoke is easy. It's in the Bible. Amen. And so as we take, this, this is a light body. Just to come and eat. That's a light, but just come and eat. So that's a light body. And when we take that light body, right, the body that God has not put on your neck, they will roll away. Yeah. Bodies will roll away tonight. Yeah. I, I want to hear a louder amen. Yeah. Okay, somebody's body will roll away tonight. Yeah. If you are that person, let your amen be the loudest. In the life of somebody here tonight, God will do a new thing. Amen. You are going to forget the things of old. Amen. And it's going to spring forth. Amen. It shall spring forth. Amen. It shall spring forth. Amen. It shall spring forth. Amen. Bible says, shall you not know it? Meaning that it shall be uh, very evident that God is at work. Those who are here on Tuesday, what, what do we use? God will do something testimonious. Lift your hands if that you are the one. Say, Father, I thank you because you do something testimonious in my life. You will do something testimonious in my life. You're going to do something testimonious in my life. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. So verse, um, chapter 4, verse 16, take your seats. Um, I'm also looking at time, don't worry. Verse 16, Ephesians 4, 16, it says here, from whom the whole body fitly joined together, if you have it on the screen, from whom the whole body eh, fitly, fitly, that is they fit together. So the Lord is saying to us through his word, Stop the fighting, stop the bickering, stop the... Uh -huh. There's a lot that the body of Christ can do. Ezekiel 37 that Pastor Lowry taught us yesterday. You know, Bible said they rose up an army, a great army. An army is one, am I right? And they follow... Uh -huh. But a house divided is against the cannot stand. And that's how come the enemy is making so much divisions in the house. 
Pastors fighting pastors, brothers fighting brothers, workers fighting workers, inside one unit. Husband fighting wife, fight wife, wife fighting husband. How do you want to conquer? Put this Bible passage now. From who the whole body. Look at it now. What did he say? Feet. Feetly. Join together. Oh, so don't miss that word, feet, feet, feet. Because feet means that they may not be the same, but that they fit. Am I right, sir? Uh-huh. So, uh, man and man, that's not fitting. Woman and woman, that's not fitting. <laughs> so, fitly joined means that they, there's a fitting. Yeah. From what they over the fitly joined together and. Uh-huh. So, when that you now join, you now compact it, you bind the bond. Stronger, Abby. Uh, so go back to your unit and compact. Go back to your church and compact. The Lord gave them a command. They say, a lamb for a house. So that they will compact. By that which every joint supplies. So there is no useless member of the body of Christ. We are different. But there's no useless member. Everyone has something to give. The body works when each part is given its own part. Marriages work when each part is given its own part. Right? Yeah. When each part is given its own part. I'm talking to men now. While you're sitting down watching Chelsea, you're not, that's not a part. Uh, Avi? Look at him. <laughs> How is that a part? <laughs> Praise God. Put these scriptures now. I want to take communion tonight. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. <laughs> Amen. Young woman, I'm giving you a lot of tips tonight. Oh. All right. By that which every joint supplies. So even if you are your unit, supply your own parts. Uh, don't bother too much about what others are not doing. That's why I said I'm not so much concerned about what happens in other churches. But this is our own a lamb for a house. When Jesus was going to appraise the churches, he didn't tell the angel of the church in Ephesus to account for what is happening in Laodicea. Am I right? Uh, so, but this house, oh, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The Lord will take us far. Amen. We will rise as a mighty army. Amen. God will do something new in our lives. Amen. And by His grace, we shall participate. Amen. We will not be self centered. If somebody step on your toes, don't fight. Because you will still, you cannot. The Bible says offenses will always happen. But let the overriding principle, which is that the same person who step on your toes is your brother, let that overriding principle, one Father, one Spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God who works through you all and in you all. Put the scripture, we are going somewhere now. Compacted by that which every joint supplies. So supply your own part and be content with supplying your own part. And you see how everything will fit together. To the effectual working in the measure of every part. I love this one. Look at it all. Makes increase. See how participation works now. How does the increase come? From the sharing, from the participation, multiplication comes. Virtue flows from the head. Healings happen. Miracles happen. Lives are touched. Lives are transformed. Angels are walking freely among the people, but they don't see them. Whereas they may not realize that it is the little things that they are doing that is providing the atmosphere for the angels to operate. 
And they may also not realize that it is the little things they don't do that hinder the operation of angels in their midst. When the children of Israel were murmuring and bickering, they didn't know. They thought they were doing it against Moses. They didn't realize that they were also hindering the hand of God from bringing them deliverance. Praise God. And if we grab these things, we will be wiser. And when we are wiser, we are better for it. And certain things that afflict the church will not afflict the church. And things that afflict the young ones will not afflict them. Why? Because we are learning that every part has a part to play. And every part has to fit in. And every part has to supply. And when every part is supplying in that compact environment, an increase up happens almost without stress. Just naturally. If we have that principle, that atmosphere today now, you may not realize, you may just go to somewhere tomorrow now and then, you don't know that God has prepared the ground for you. And the job they are looking for just happens like this. Or the wife you are looking for just happens like this. Just happens. And the Lord just speaks to you. And say, That's the one you have been looking for for the past 15 years. Just by participating. A lamb for a house, 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 a lamb for a house. Praise the Lord. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. So, if you are a man and you want to be married, learn not to be self-centered because God did it in the context of a home. You cannot be by yourself, for yourself, Abby. Eh? Does it work? I know it doesn't work. <sighs> First Corinthians chapter 12, so we can close with this. I'm sorry for taking time, but I believe that it's important to share these things. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. For as the body is one and has many members, and all members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Actually, also, when you read First Corinthians 10, 16 downwards, it's talking about the loaf that you are breaking from. The loaf is one. The bread is one. And the bread signifies Christ. But there are many members. Go on, verse 13, quickly. Um, for as the body is one, so by, for by one spirit we are all baptized into one body. Whether we are Jews or Gentiles or bond or free, and we have been made to drink into one spirit. Next verse. For the body is not one member, but many. Remember, it's one body, but many members. Go on. If the foot shall say, because I'm not the hand, I'm not of the body, is, there, is it therefore not of the body? And if the hair shall say, because I'm not the eye, I'm not the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where will be the smelling and so on and so forth? You know, so don't say it doesn't concern you. What happens to the church doesn't concern you. What happens to your brethren doesn't concern you. What happens to your fellowship doesn't concern you. What happens to your marriage doesn't concern you. And we can't say that because God didn't make us to operate in silos. He operates us to work in the principle of participation and that when we Follow this rule of participation. Uh, there is an increase that follows. There is an increase 
that follows. Praise the Lord. Amen and amen. I pray that the Lord will guide me, will guide you in the name of Jesus. And that we will prepare because he wants to do a new thing. In the nations, he wants to do a new thing. In the body of Christ, he wants to do a new thing. God does not need the permission of any pastor, any man, a man of God, any bishop for him to do what he wants to do. It's God. Amen? Amen? Amen. Uh, you can, all these things are in the Bible. Moses had elders now. Rulers of 100, rulers, Abi. When he was going to choose a successor, who did God ask him to choose? His protocol officer. Why not one of the elders? You know, so you can't box God. And the Lord is still on the throne. In your life, he will do a new thing. In my life, he will do a new thing. What you need to do to participate, may you have wisdom to do it. And what I need to do to participate in my own miracle, may I have uh, the wisdom to do it. Can you pray a prayer for yourself? Put your hand upon your head, upon your chest, and say, Father, please help me. Give me wisdom that I will not walk against myself. Help me in life, in ministry, that I will not walk against myself. In my choices, help me that I will not walk against myself. In my attitude, help me that I will not walk against myself. In my actions, in my disposition, help me that I will not walk against myself. Help me, Lord, that I will not walk against myself. Help me that I will not walk against myself. Judas has no one to blame. He walked against himself. Lord, help me that I will not walk against myself. Sometimes we think we're walking against others. But we're actually walking against ourselves. Please, Lord, in my life, in my ministry, in my marriage, whether the one that I'm in or the marriage of the future, please help me that I will not walk against myself. Help me that I'm parenting. Help me that I will not walk against myself. Help me that I will not walk against myself. I just need your mercy. I just need your grace. I just need your touch. Help me to make the right decisions, to take the right steps, and to participate as you want me to do, even in the new thing that you want to do in my life. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for all that you've done for us. In the name of Jesus. Those who came early in the book of Corinthians and they ate everything so that others would not have, they didn't know that they were working against themselves. And we are praying tonight, Father, anything in our attitudes, our actions, our thoughts, or disposition that is making us work against ourselves, our destinies, and our future, please let them roll away tonight. Do the miracle of transformation. As we take this communion tonight, transform us. In the name of Jesus. Even after the children of Israel left Egypt, they started to walk against themselves by murmuring. Father, please, Lord God Almighty, give us wisdom. The kind of spirit that was in Joshua and Caleb that made them believe that they could inherit the promise. Father, let the right spirit be in us. This is the primary work we pray tonight. Please, the right spirit in us. In the name of Jesus. In this house, in this house, in this house, a lamb for a house. In this particular house, as many as are here, as many as will join us, Father God Almighty, let the right spirit be in us. In the name of Jesus. We don't want quarrelsome spirits, murmuring spirits, fighting spirits, but we want spirits that will walk with God. Father, Lord, thank you for doing it in us. In the name of Jesus. And as we take this communion tonight, let the virtue from the head flow to the entire body. 
Anyone connected to this house who is sick tonight, Father, let there be healing. For everyone connected to this parish, this house, a lamb for a house, anyone far away or near that has a body now that is not of the Lord, instantly, Lord, let the body roll away. In the name of Jesus. Give us your own touch. Do a new thing in our lives. Do something glorious. Do something testimonious. We we'll pray over the bread and the wine as we want to take it in obedience to you. Let your blessing rest on it. The bread and the wine is sanctified in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And the people say, Amen. God bless you. Please help us to share choir. Help us to sing. God bless you. Please, let's bow our heads for a moment. As the ministers continue, everyone else who is not serving, bow your heads. I give an opportunity now for anyone who wants to, every eye closed, you are not yet a child of God and you want to be a child of God. You want to be born again. Please raise your right hand wherever you are. We want to pray for you quickly before we, because you need to be part of the body before the blessing can reach you. Raise your right hand quickly. Raise it eye up. I want to be a child of God. I want to be a Christian. I want Jesus in my heart as my Lord and Savior. Raise it eye up so we see you. And we're going to pray with you where you are there. But let us see who we're praying for. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Go ahead, please. Thank you.
Hallelujah. Everyone has the bread. So we're going, to do, we're going to eat together. If you can stand, okay. Except you are not able to stand for other reasons. And all that the Lord asks us to do is to eat and to drink. So we'll do it together. And the Lord will do the rest. And our God will do a new thing in the name of Jesus. When we read the scriptures, please make sure you say that amen from inside you loud and clear. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the name of God the Father. Amen. And of the Son. Amen. And of the Holy Spirit. Take the cup. Also, please say your amen very loud and clear. Let it come from inside you. And right after we drink, just pray and say, Lord, just have your way. Do what you only can do in my life, in our church, and in our nation. Just have your way. Do the rest. On that night of the first Passover, they didn't even know how it happened. But their deliverance was complete because the Lord went into action and the Lord is still walking. So just after we take it, just say, Lord, have your way. Go before God and pray for like two minutes or so and say, Lord, have your way. And when he had given, um, after the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had sobbed, saying, this cup is the new testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. In the name of God the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have your will, Lord. Heal, deliver. Make all set free, increase, multiply, bless, provide in your own miraculous way. Let there be healing. In your own miraculous way, Father, let there be healing. Let bodies be healed, businesses be healed, homes be healed, careers be healed, families be healed. Just have your way, Lord. Pray, pray, pray. Talk to the Lord now.
Glory to God forever. Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, we thank you, Lord, we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And indeed, in all our lives, the Lord will have his way. Anybody that is not of the Lord is taken away from you. You will never see it again. As you take on the burden of the Lord, which is light, every other burden is rolled away. Forever they are rolled away. In the name of Jesus. I want to read a passage. I told you to read it um, as an assignment. Joel chapter 2. Put, put it on the screen. What is this new thing that the Lord wants to do in our lives? He wants to send the rain. What happens as a result of the rain? You see it in that passage, Joel chapter 2 from verse 23. Quickly, if you have it put there. If not, read it. And you can personalize this scripture. Be glad then, ye children of Zion. I am one. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately, and it will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in this first month. In the name of Jesus. Next verse quickly. Let's just personalize it. And your floors shall be full of wheat. Your fat shall overflow with wine and oil. Verse 25. And the Lord will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the cankerworm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, his great army which is sent amongst us. In this house, the Lord will send a great army Amen. of angels to minister for us. Amen. And then he goes and says, You shall eat in plenty. And you will be satisfied. And you will praise the name of the Lord your God. That has dealt wondrously with you. And you will never be ashamed. In the name of Jesus. And you shall know that I am the, the Lord is the one in the midst of Israel. In the midst of this house the Lord is with us. He is the Lord our God. And none else. And we shall never be ashamed. Verse 28. It shall come to pass afterward that the Lord will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And upon the servants of the Lord and upon the handmaids in these days will the Lord pour out his spirit. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. amen. Verse 30, and the Lord will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. 31, the sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord. Verse 32, quickly, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Amen. In this mountain, in this house, in Zion, in Jerusalem, there shall be deliverance. As the Lord has said, there shall be deliverance. And in the remnants whom the Lord shall call. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we want to thank you so much for your faithfulness, for your love. And for giving us the biggest sacrifice of all, your own son to die for us. This night we have taken a lamb for a house. We have taken the blood. We have taken the body. Let the miracles follow. Amen. Let the increase follow. Amen. Let the old pass away. Amen. All sufferings, all poverty, pass them away. Amen. All sicknesses, let them not be seen again. Amen. Let the new emerge now. In all our lives, oh God, do a new thing. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And amen. amen. God bless you. Let's package an offering to give this night. God bless you as you do. Choir, help us one more time. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Hallelujah, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh. 
Jesus. Father, please let our offerings bring you as we smell. In, and let your fire fall. Give us more than what money can buy. Smile on us, O God. Glorify your name. Let all our lives count for you. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Uh, quick announcements as we close. Anointing service, remember, 5 p.m. on Sunday. And we'll have our, we'll have our uh, three services in the morning. On Sunday, second service, after second service, there will be Bible study, Bible Sunday school rather, in different classes, prepare for that. So the third service will be 11 and not 10.45. Um, the flow fellowship of the teens they have a program, the theme is From My Heart. It's coming up April 19 uh, in the Teens Church at 6 p.m. That's a Friday. Daughters of Destiny have a beach hangout. It comes up Saturday, April 27. You need to register in time. See Sister Quinta at Yukusok and um, register with 10,000 naira. There's a new married counseling class that's going to start. If you want to be part of that, please let us know now. Amen. Rise to your feet as we close. This service will not be complete until you pray for somebody. Remember that we are meant to participate. So hold hands with your neighbor and say you are the one that the Lord is speaking to. The Lord will do a brand new thing in your life. Something testimonial, something testimonial, something testimonial, something testimonial, something testimonial, something testimonial, something testimonial. In the name of Jesus, right now, it's happening. The Lord is doing something testimonial in your life, something testimonial in your life. And so shall it be. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Tell your neighbor, Shalom, Shalom.